Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out a MOOC about Mecha Musume kits. This is the Bishoujo Plastic Model Magazine for beginners from Hobby Japan. So this is another uh, technique driven book, specifically techniques for beginners, obviously with the name, uh, for anybody who wants to improve some modeling skills that are kind of more specific for Mecha Musume style models like the Sosai Shoujo Teien kits from Kodobukiya or Megami Device, Frame Arms Girl. Flipping through this, it looked like there was a little bit in here about some other Mecha Mekamasume kits, at least mention of some of the other kits available from other companies like uh, Aoshima, Volks, looks like there's some more in here in the back, and of course Bandai's 30 Minutes Sisters kits, Max Factory. But most of the techniques it looks like are primarily going to be done on some of Kotobukiya's kits. As I've said before, Kotobukiya is still just kind of the best when it comes to the Mekamasume model kits, so it makes sense, but it's a really nice looking MOOC, I've got to say. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so right here for the cover art, if we take off this part right here, we've got this photograph of the modeler who is the main modeler uh, for this, who is going to be demonstrating all of the techniques here and is featured in some of the photographs of everything here in the MOOC. And this is, if we look in here on the next page, Mea or Mare. I'm not exactly sure if there's meant to be an R at the end with the way that it's spelled there in Katakana is just Mea. But anyway, just going back here under the dust jacket, we have a different photograph. So it's sort of like a sort of just a bit of a photo book here of her, but here is the backside and the price for this 1800 yen so about 15 bucks not too bad at all on the first page inside here we have some more images there of mea san shopping for some different mecha musume kits there you got some nice ones there on display i'm not exactly sure what store that is it looks a bit like maybe hobby paradise but i believe that hobby paradise is gone i'm not sure anyway uh so here it is the table of contents broken down into the different sections and you can see a number of the builds right here that are going to be featured in this mook going on here to number one the theme of part one is just an introduction basically to building uh starting beautiful girls plastic models. So here we've got one of the Guilty Princess model kits there from Max Factory. And it's looking like there's gonna be a lot of interesting text in here that I'll just have to translate at a later date in order to really appreciate. But this is, seems like it's just sort of like an introduction to like some of the basics of plastic modeling. It's talking about like the color separation, seam lines, like using some kind of action base, kind of stand there with the kits. And yeah, there's a lot of, so this whole section here is all just Q and A. So question and answer bits kind of about different aspects of modeling plastic girl model kits. So, and it also tells you which page to go to like for, I guess more on the answer. So like here's a question and answer and then it says also page 46 and page 92. You can go to for maybe some more kind of visual demonstrations of answering that particular question, what the question is about. So yeah, it seems like this is going to be a lot of translating that I'll have to do in order to really get the full value of this MOOC. But all right, so here we are back at the store, and this is kind of talking about some of the common modeling supplies. And you know, the modeling supplies are going to be you know generally the same as anything you would use for Gumpla or whatever else. You know, nipper, knife, glue, sandpaper, sanding sponges, drills, uh, different kind of solutions for decals and different paints, uh, weathering products all that good stuff. And then a couple of before and after images here of the Guilty Princess Maidroid kits. I guess this is just kind of showing the difference in finish once you put some at least some top coat on it, like that. Okay, so basic modeling steps here. First, cutting the parts, uh, nubs, all that good stuff. And pointing out a couple of points of the construction here of the Alice kit from this line. And then a couple of finished images up here next. Let's see, some more images shock, uh, talking about uh, how to add some detail. Okay, so using like a paint marker for a little bit of gold lining detail added onto that, also onto some of the raised bits. So on like the clear blue parts have this raised detail. So using a marker just to carefully go along the raised bits to just kind of help bring out that detail. Using some extra thin cement to remove some of the seam lines like up there on the shoulders. And using a wood finish uh, sticker film there from Hasegawa to cover up the base plate. That's kind of a cool idea. I've always seen these kind of uh, finish film sheets and never really had any idea how I might actually ever use one. So aside from like using the Aurora ones for different cameras and things like that, I don't know, but that's an interesting use for them, certainly. So Plamo Log here is talking a little bit more about this particular series. 
it looks like. And then we're moving on to step two, which is gonna be getting into a Kotobukiya kiss. This is a Kotobukiya Frame Arms Girl Gorai kit here that we can see is painted in this very nice blue color. So let's see what this is gonna be all about. So here is the stock kit just built up straight out of the box is the white version. And here's just kind of talking about like the contents of the model. So it's a really nice introduction if you just kind of never really been into these kind of model kits, I guess. And it looks like for this, she's just gonna be using some spray can paint on that. And let's see, maybe a little bit of some uh, filter liquid on that, just to give it some nice uh, color modulation there, changing the color slightly with the filtering liquid. So. And this is just kind of going over the basic steps of the build, kind of some supplies that you'll need, including plastic gloves for painting when you're using the spray cans. Yeah, that's a good idea. And she's even painting on the runners, as forbidden as that is, but it is possible, I guess. Okay, I wouldn't recommend it, but she's painting on the runners there, and let's see if that's gonna cause any issue or how they're gonna address that later on. But Finishing up uh, just some more of the kind of modeling tips there for the construction of the kit in particular. Uh, okay, and then so here is then how to fix that on this next page. So it's showing how to decant some of the paint uh, from the spray can. So using like a straw and a cup, you can spray some out and then you can brush paint it. So she's having to now go back and then fix the nub marks because she's uh, painted on the runner. Now it of course has nub marks on it and she's having to go back and touch those up with a brush. So you see what I mean while you don't do that because it just creates more work for you in the end and then you still are gonna have like a visible nub mark. It's gonna be really hard for you guys to see it but even I can see in this photo there that there's still a visible nub there just from the way that that is done. So yeah, just don't don't paint on the runners unless it's an undergated kit. Anyway, here's what I'm interested to see is how she's using the filter liquid because I've actually never, I've done filtering uh, on kits but using just regular enamel paint. I've never tried these filter liquids here from Mr. Color, Mr. Hobby. So I'll have to try some out in the future just because it seemed like kind of pretty convenient, yeah, for different types of modeling, especially when you want to do like really clean paint jobs like this, or I guess even weathered ones as well. But uh, she's using the filtering colors and it's just kind of this one little section up here, just basically to do her panel lining. And so she's just doing like the panel lining on the blue parts using the purple color and then uh, doing some like kind of panel lining as it were on the hair parts, going over the, that a little bit with like a kind of orangish color there, just to bring out some of the detail and add a bit of shading to like the hair. So you can see some of that. So here we have the finished product. And yeah, definitely, I mean, like I've done panel lining using different colors before. I'm um, just using, yeah, just thin down enamel paint is all you really need, but certainly you could use that Mr. Weathering uh, filter color to do that. So I'll have to try to get some so I can try it out on a kit in the future and then kind of demonstrate that for you guys. It's simple enough. I mean, you don't really need me to teach you how to do it, but just to, I can try it and I can let you guys know kind of what my experience was with that. So I do really like that color scheme there on the Gorai. That's nice. So here we have a Kotobukiya section. This is interestingly, that is the Kotobukiya store. Yeah, I guess it would be. Except that the front of the Kotobukiya store doesn't look like that as far as I know. So unless this is like a different Kotobukiya store, it looks like it's like in some uh, mall or something. So I'm not exactly sure where that is. That's not the main Kotobukiya store in Akihabara. It doesn't, the front of the store doesn't look like that, but it does appear to be a Kotobukiya store. So anyway, just talking about some of the different Kotobukiya stuff that you can buy, MSG parts, is, aside from all the different kits and everything, also paints. There is Frame Arms Girl specific paint uh, that is made from Gaia notes, but then they also sell all the different kinds of paints and other different stuff there. So after Kotobukiya shopping, now we're ready for section three, which is going to be on a Sosai Shoujo Teian model kit here, the Maroka Yuki swim style version. So let's see what we've got for this one. I guess the focus of this section is probably gonna be on the skin tone, I would imagine. So again, here it's just kind of going over, the, this is like the contents of the kit, talking about that in a bit more detail. And then we're getting into the modeling. So like sanding the mold lines on the kit, using some of the Tamiya Weathering Master sets. So the Tamiya Weathering Master sets come, those are usually made for like weathering, but they have a couple of sets which are specifically made for uh, highlighting and shadowing skin tones. So you can use those for that. Looks like she's used a bit of that on here. And also looks like uh, removed the pre-painted eyes on one of the face parts so that she could use the water slide decals and make a different facial expression for that face. So that's pretty interesting. And I was wondering what she was going to use for removing the seam lines and it looks like she's using this uh, flesh colored super glue. It's basically, I forget which company makes this. Yeah, it is from Guy Notes. So Guy Notes makes this flesh colored super glue essentially I think is what that is. 
um, that you can use for specifically kits like this just because it's obviously going to be that kind of color. So you can put that on there and then sand that down and it should blend pretty well to fill in the seam lines on your flesh parts. So here's another kind of intro here for another modeler, Ura Hanasan, and some of these different techniques kind of in use on a couple of these kits here. I believe they, this is from the Frame Arms modeling book uh, three, I wanna say. It's maybe what that particular model is from. We got some more techniques in practice here, like I was saying about removing the pre-painted eyes to change those out with the water side decals. Uh, for making different eyes or different facial expressions or whatever. So it was a little bit about that and then top coating to seal everything in, adding some shading with the weathering set and then the tiny little white dots using enamel paint to make it so like the reflection, light reflection on the cheeks. You just add like a really super teeny, tiny little drop, dot, 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 I was trying to say dot and drop at the same time of white paint there on the cheeks. Anyway, painting the toenails here as well uh, with some paint there. And here's our finished product. So a few different photographs of this. Looks really nice. Yeah, came out good. Uh, definitely looks better than the kit just straight out of the box with very minimal work there. That's kind of the whole point of this. So here's our Plemo log. So talking some more about the SST kits. I'll call them just for short uh, there with Urahara-san. All right. Next up, part four, here we have one of the Vlockers kits from Volks. So Volks makes their own line of Mecha Musume kits. I've built and reviewed one of them, but I should check out maybe some more in the future. Anyway, here's a bit about using the acrylic paints, model acrylic paints here from Vallejo. Certainly another option that you can use for painting your kits. It looks like this is also just using a kind of very simple airbrush for this as well. So let's see, it's using like some Vallejo wash here for the details in the hair. It's like very similar to what we saw previously done with like the Mr. Hobby stuff. Uh, but the Mr. Hobby supplies that we've seen so far have all been like solvent based. These would be, Vallejo would all be water based stuff, I guess. So airbrushing that and again, airbrushing on the runners and then cutting them off and then having to touch up the nub marks with a brush. So again, kind of don't quite understand that, but all right, here's the finished product for that one. And it does still come out looking pretty good with, a, it looks like kind of a little bit of weathering on there, although I'm not sure if that's maybe intentional or maybe just kind of uh, what happened with the paint just being a bit scratched or something. But anyway, interesting. Plamo log here, talking some more about Vallejo modeling colors and other different types of paint here. There's the Tamiya color, Citadel colors, the more uh, acrylic based, uh, water based paints there. Up next here, part five, Megami device with a very cool looking build here uh, based on the Osprey Archer there, I believe, right? But a really cool color scheme and li like lighting work done on that. So I'm interested to see kind of what the, what was done to make those light up effects. But anyway, again, here we've got some more information just kind of introducing the Megami device line, kind of some stuff, uh, general information about that. And it's just, just, I will say a lot of information packed in here that I'm sure would be super interesting just as a fan of Mecha Musume kits in general. But yeah, you'll just have to use your translator app on your phone to, to kind of translate everything. So once again, we've got some basics of just kind of construction and modification. So using like a drill and using MSG option parts and things like that for creating new joints and for adding new custom parts and stuff like that on your kits. Those would be the MSG sets of the LED sabers that you can get from Kodobukiya as well is what she's gonna be using with this. And after some other different kind of customization here to the hair, so she combined uh, hair parts like the front half and the back half of the hair are actually from two different kits. So she had to do a little bit of modification like putty work there on the hair to kind of fill the gap in between. So here you can see the primed version of that where just everything except this, it looks like, yeah, most everything except the skin tone is just primed there with some surfacer so you can kind of see what's all customized there. And then we're getting into some more of the paint work. First of all, making some new eyes for that. It looks like it is, she went for, yeah, two, two tone eyes, two different color eyes. So it's kind of interesting. And then painting, painting the hair parts here. Again, it's two tone with like a blue color on the underside and pink on the top. So kind of cool concept there for the two-tone effect. And up here, it looks like I'm not exactly sure how she went about it. Maybe just like a, taking a photo and then just like drawing over it in the computer or something just to make a mock-up of the color for that, just to plan out the colors for it. Uh, and then painting. So painting the fluorescent pink first. So you just paint the fluorescent pink and then she used some masking tape to mask off the line details and stuff and then painting over that 
uh, with some dark black and it looks like that's like a dark silver kind of color. Now once you remove the masking tape, then you have these nice bright fluorescent pink lines around on the kit, which you can see here, which under black light will look very cool and dynamic. So it'll glow like that. I wonder if that's actually mixed, if that's not pure fluorescent pink, just because it's shining so orange, I wonder if there's some fluorescent or fluorescent orange or fluorescent yellow or something mixed in with the pink to make it shine that particular color. But anyway, really cool look to that. I think it came out looking really nice. It looks particularly interesting there under the black light for sure. And then with the LED savers, also a really nice touch on that. So that's a really cool build. Got a Plemo log here. Uh, again, just kind of talking about customization with different paints and different uh, MSG option parts, stuff like that for planning out custom builds things like that. And it looks like this is just going to be a model catalog here. So just kind of an introduction to some of the different lines that are available from different companies. So here, for example, is Kodobukya and Arcanadia. There's two, uh, the first two kits out in that line. We've got more on the way from those. We've got Kodobukya's Sosai Shoujo Teian kits. So not only does this kind of introduce the kits, but talks about some of the different features of the kits. So again, a lot of really cool information, uh, surely. And we've got Kotobukiya Frame Arms Girls, which was kind of one of the original, right? That kind of started it all. And then still ongoing, still a really nice line. Up next here, we've got the Megami Device line, of course, as well. So a lot of different Megami Device featured here. Then from Volks, the Vlockers line. And yeah, the spacesuit one definitely looks quite interesting. I'll have to maybe see if I can get my hands on that one. This is the one that I have reviewed before the Iris design, so you can check out that review if you're interested. This one is the one that we just recently uh, had the announcement at Shizuoka. Uh, we're getting some like alternate body forms here for the Draconia, I believe is the name of that one, something like that. And there's more available if you guys are interested, you can check that out. From Aoshima, we have the Gatai series here, which are kind of like based on different super robot stuff. I've not actually built any of those. Uh, but I have built some of Aoshima's VFG kits, which it doesn't seem like those are gonna be featured in here, interestingly enough. I don't think those were on there, right? No, huh. The Variable Fighter Girls, which are their like Macross crossover kits. So from Good Smile Company, we have the Cheeto Serium line. Those also I've not built any of, but I do plan on getting the new one that's coming out. Looking forward to that. Um, from Max Factory, the Guilty Princess line, as we've kind of talked about already before, so there's a few different examples uh, from that line. Max Factory's God's Order, series. Uh, I do have this first one. I've not built it up yet. So I have been meaning to build that kit and then the kind of black version. Another one is on the way. That should be out very soon, I believe. And it looks like that's coming out in June. So I'm looking forward to that and I need to build up the first one so I can familiarize myself with that line. But that God's Order kit does look pretty cool. Uh, let's see the Dark Advent line here, of course, from Alpha Max. So we've taken a look at all of those releases, including the new Relax style version of Sophia. Up next, and I believe this is last, yeah, they kept Bandai for last. Poor Bandai. Bandai's always first in all the model magazines, so this time they relegated them to last because this is the 30 Minute Sisters line, of course, so we've got uh, the different kits here and different option parts and stuff. Everything there for Bandai's 30 Minutes Sisters line. They didn't really get a whole lot of love in this particular issue. It seemed like there was a lot more Max Factory and Kodobukiya Central, and I was surprised to see a lot of uh, Volks there, or there, at least there was that whole like kind of short section there, but there was a whole section dedicated to one of the Vlockers kits, which was kind of interesting. As I've said before, you kind of don't really see those around too often. But anyway, guys, a really cool MOOC. There's a lot of translating to be done if you want to really fully enjoy it. But if you're a fan of Mechamisume style modeling, I think there's probably a lot that you can get from this as far as just uh, really helpful tips and tricks for improving your modeling skills, just making your models uh, look you know, that much better just with very minimal, pretty simple work there. It just takes like a little bit of practice and maybe some basic tools and supplies. If you guys want to check out some tools, supplies, and of course the kits themselves, we have a load of them here at USA Gundam Store. You can check the link down in the video description for USA Gundam Store. Uh, check out the different kits that we have available. There's a lot if you guys are into Mechamisume kits or if you're interested in trying them out, there's a lot that you, that you can find. So if you guys have any further questions, of course, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of this MOOC. Was there a particular uh, technique or something, a particular build that you found interesting? You can let me know in the comment section. I'm looking forward to trying out some of those uh, Mr. Color uh, weathering filter colors, not only for these style model kits, but for others as well. I've seen them around, you know, they've been around for a while. 
Uh, I've been meaning to try them out, so I'll have to do that. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Like the video, subscribe if you feel so inclined. I really appreciate all of your support. Till next time, have a great day. See y'all later. Bye.